Insane moments on Caught in Providence. Is your mother guilty or not guilty? Not. Not. <laughs> should we find her some money or should we let her go for nothing? Yes, money. Yes, money. <laughs> I want him charged with contempt of court and get him out of here. Yeah, come out of there! Whatever you want to do, do it! Put the fucking cuff on me! You f***ing hug on the end of You f***ing hug on You f***ing Old fella here got charged for publicly smoking, and he rolled right into the court in a rugged manner to plead not guilty. But as the trial began, the defendant immediately launched into explaining how he can't afford to pay the $50 ticket. When I received um, a ticket, I told the policeman, well, I don't, I don't know if I can afford the $50 because I'm on social security. I have limited income. And he says, well, take it to court and plead um, not guilty and you'll knock it down to five. So I'm not really sure what to do. I, I want to do the right thing, but I can't afford the $50. He clearly loved to smoke and even mentioned mentioned his go-to brand of cigarettes. But as they were not cheap, he ended up going for an efficient, budget-friendly method. Yup, he started rolling his own cigarettes. Surprised? I'm not. It costs about $25, and then you get a carton of, of the rollies, so I buy about three boxes of rollies. You sure you're rolling a uh, tobacco and not rolling something you else? Know, I told the policeman that. I said, you can smoke the marijuana, because I see people smoking in the park, but you can't smoke cigarettes. He goes, yeah, I know. All in all, the guy seemed like a decent person, and the judge said so. Even though he was clearly on edge, that had more to do with the $50 than anything else. The prosecuting inspector came to his rescue, and here is the verdict. Inspector Quinn has pointed out the charge that they have lodged against you is not sustainable. And he has pointed out that the city has not, cannot sustain that charge. To his credit, even as the prosecuting officer, he's going to make a motion that we dismiss this. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Disorderly conduct is already a serious offense to a certain degree. However, that didn't stop this dude. Nope. He was loud and bold in asking for what he wanted from the court. Moreover, when the judge sentenced him for 10 days in ACI, he went ahead and committed another super serious offense right then and there. May I go, Your Honor? It's yes, sir. May I go, Your Honor? No, let's keep him there. At the end of 10 days, <clears throat> bring him back for a review. We'll see you again in 10 days. Yeah. What do you say, Sergeant? Oh, bring him back here. Bring him back here. Even after threatening the judge, the defendant kept pleading not guilty to the previous charge leveled against him. He kept accusing the judge like he had a personal vendetta against him. While the judge charged him further, the guy then completely went off the hinges. I want the appropriate charge for threatening the judge. Additional Double jeopardy! That's double jeopardy! I will, I will sue you! Whatever you want to do, do it! And do it now! When I get finished with you, Judge, I will put you where you're supposed to be in jail for double jeopardy! Defendant believed he was being wrongfully accused, but in doing so, he disrupted the court decorum and held it in open contempt. And these were serious charges as heck. Judge Caprio regarded him calmly and carefully even though he continued to threaten him. I was arrested for one thing and one thing only. This is how I And you'll say, I was, this is problem, bro. I want him charged with contempt of court and get him out of here. Yeah, come on, then. Whatever you want to do, do it. Put the fucking cuffs on me. You f***ing hug on the end of the earth. You f***ing hug on You f***ing It's a regular day at the municipal court. The judge was seated and the court was in session. In came a mother followed by a train of children all of different sizes. A couple of kids even had firefighter hats on. A weird but interesting start to a court hearing. Judge, there were less kids in my freshman class. <laughs> <laughs> Arrest those two kids for wearing a hat in the courtroom. Yeah, especially the firefighter hat, Judge. Katie, who are these kids? Where'd you find them? Did you rent these kids outside? Uh, unfortunately, they don't go back, so no. <laughs> nope. <laughs> are there any twins here? Anya's a twin and Eric. Judge Frank seemed pretty enthralled by the kids, so much so that he invited Alex up on the stage and chatted him up. Now he was a chirpy little dude. Though he was quick to defend his mother, he was also pretty quick to answer other questions along the way. Is your mother guilty or not guilty? Not. Not. <laughs> should we find her some money or should we let her go for nothing? Yes, money. Yes, money. <laughs>
How about $35 court cost? Yes! How about five days in jail? Yes! No. <laughs> Katie was a wonderful mother, full smiles for her kids and doting on them. The judge handed the verdict to little Alex, and he was eager to bang the gavel and pass judgment. Let's see whether it was in favor of her mommy. And I think you should dismiss this case. Say that. And I think you would just miss this case. <laughs> okay, well, I asked your opinion, so I guess I have to take it. So. Take case dismissed. <laughs> the court called upon the Volpes to answer for speeding. They were a mother-son duo, and while the mother gave off a short and sweet vibe, the son, on the other hand, was tall and up front. Let's see how the judge is taking it. And your mother's name is? Pauline. Pauline. All right, now take a deep breath, Paul. You look like you're a little nervous. I am. <laughs> don't... I, 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 never in court. <laughs> uh, well, don't be nervous. You've got somebody to protect you, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not so sure. You know what? You look like somebody, and I can't... I'm, my, I'm searching my memory. You, you remind me of somebody. You know who? Miss Pauline had never been to court, and that was quite obvious. A first for everything, right? Mr. William, however, soon turned his impression around as he reminded Judge Caprio of someone eerily similar to him. And with his mad kickboxing skills. As soon as you did that, Bobby Chess would have did this to you. One straight jab, <laughs> right? I think you could have taken him. That's possible. I used to spar with Vinnie Paz when he first turned pro. So you, yeah. were, you were a kickboxer? I went boxing, then I didn't like getting hit too much. Yeah. So I went to kickboxing. You think you can take Inspector Quinn? No, no, I know him for yeah, a long I, time. I have a different move. The municipal court soon turned insane as everyone started showing their best moves. Now, Mr. William was a trained professional, but in my humble opinion, Judge Caprio's move took the cake. No one can beat that, I'm sure of. I think you'll be too fast for me. <laughs> anyway, Inspector Quinn, this was two miles over the speed of him, and I think that based on her previous driving record, I think we're gonna give her a break on this. How do you feel about that? The city agrees, Ron. All right, based on the factual pattern in this case, I think we're gonna dismiss it. Okay. Thank you so much. Miss Pauline turned out to be quite an impressive woman as well. She'd been driving for 50 plus years with a crystal clean driving record. Now that was commendable. Moreover, she was still a working woman. A superwoman indeed. Well, in all seriousness, you have a wonderful son. Thank you. And I'm sure Everybody he would. tells me, believe me. I'm sure he would do anything in the world to protect I work in you. Stop and shop. I'm still a working. It's like you. Your son comes in all the time, John. <laughs> I, I, he, but I'm saying, 25 years I've been there. 25 years and of stop and shop. It really mock me all the time. <laughs> all the time. What am I doing working? Guilty of loving his better half too much, this Mr. Field stood in front of the judge pleading not guilty, while the wifey begged to differ. Apparently, she wasn't at fault for the red light violation. The vehicle was only registered in her name. You came here today to tell me he's guilty. <laughs> I'm not guilty. The ticket's in my name. No, I'm I not guilty. No, no, I understand that. I said, you came here today to tell me he's guilty. So the first thing you did was throw him under the bus. I'm not throwing myself under. <laughs> <laughs> so you think he's really guilty, huh? When I looked at that video, if I was a policeman, I would say he was guilty. Guilty. The way Miss Linda testified, it seemed pretty much like an open and shut case. But hold on, she had her priorities sorted, that's true. But when she played the make-believe policeman with the chief judge, this is how it played out. See where it says red time, she's gonna put an arrow there. It says 0.3, you know what that means? No. That means he went through the light for three tenths of a second. Oh, three tenths, so it was close. <laughs> well, you just said he's definitely guilty. I'm trying to explain to you, now I'm- Three tenths of a second, that's not much. All right, now, let me finish. Okay. <laughs> Now that the wife was back on her husband's side, she wasn't going to back down. Yup, the way Miss Linda dominated the court hearing, it was clear she dominated their long marriage as well. We've been happily married for 43 years, right? Yes, dear. <laughs> you know, uh, when my wife and I meet people, they usually they'll say, how long you been married? And I say, we've been happily married for five years. They say, oh, you've been happily married for five years. Is she your second or third wife? I say, oh no, we've been married 50 years. We've been happily married for five. <laughs> It was time for the lovely Linda to play the judge now and pass judgment on the defendant, which in this case was her husband. And she managed to come up with a mutually beneficial deal in the end. How do you handle this case? It's three tenths of a second. Do you give him the benefit of the doubt, right? Or do you say, hey, you three tenths, pay the fine? I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Because it's your husband. And he has I'll... to take me to dinner. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the deal. Well. I have to agree with her, Your Honor. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio D'Souza had a $25 ticket charged to him. 
but his two-year-old son Scaven upped the charges soon enough when he began breaking some very important stuff in the court. The kid came and conquered. I can't understand. You have a $25 ticket. Yeah. You've been here for two hours already. Your son's breaking a gavel. <laughs> had, That's going to cost you $50. Yeah, it's difficult. I, I've, uh, Judge, I've had been... that 150 years. He's had it about two seconds and broke it. <laughs> Just let him go. Let him go. Now, how did that parking ticket come to be? Apparently, Mr. Sergio went to the family court for a couple of hours, and even though he paid for the two-hour parking, he still ended up being charged. But more importantly, the one who was stealing the show was Little Scavit, blissfully unaware, just pounding away. What I did was I put the two tickets- I have them here. In my window. I have them. I put I the two tickets in my window, and it doesn't show that hour. You got the ticket at 1024. 1024, yes. So what I'm saying is I paid for two hours, I was there probably a little bit before t before 9. I should have gotten till 11 o'clock. The judge passed the verdict on this pretty quickly. I think he was hoping to contain the damage being caused by the kid. And he didn't forget to take back that gavel. But at that point, Scaven seemed pretty attached to it already. First meter allowed you to park it to 1019. You missed by five minutes. The matter is dismissed. Thank you, I appreciate it. I want the it. gavel back. <laughs> All right. No, you can't bring it with you. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Everything in his mouth. Thank you very much, Ron. Miss Haley O'Dell openly defied a traffic rule, and that landed her here in the court of Judge Frank. She was apparently rushing to get to work on time, as she was a bartender. And in typical lawyer fashion, Judge Caprio made her admit something that was going to cost her. What do you do? I bartend. How are the tips? They're OK. Feel good? Yeah. yeah. Now you've already established the fact that you can afford to pay. <laughs> you're supposed to say, they're terrible. <laughs> they're okay. You know, they're really not. You're supposed to say, the tips are so bad, I try so hard, <laughs> nobody's leaving tips, I have no money, judge. Yeah. But already you've established you can pay. <laughs> Video evidence showed that the vehicle indeed took a right turn at the red light. Now, according to the defendant, she wasn't driving at that particular moment. And that made the decision even harder for the judge. So he took help from a special someone in the audience. Take a guess who that might be. Marissa, come up here. Come up here. Come on. Come on. I never do this. I never hug girls that come up here because it's terrible, right? I can't even kiss them like that, right? <laughs> now, why do you think I'm doing that? Is she your daughter? She's my daughter, right. And she drives your car. Right. <laughs> Lovely, charming Marissa. My only daughter. So you know she's very special, right? Miss Marissa turned out to be a carbon copy of her dad. Sweet and full of compassion. The father-daughter bond was pretty tight as well. The judge left the verdict solely at his daughter's discretion, and she made the right one. She says she wasn't driving it, and she's being evicted because uh, her girlfriend is pregnant. So, what do you think I should do? Dismiss it. Dismiss it. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> if it was the ballet, then... Oh, I see. On that basis. Okay. Mm -hmm. And also, her, she's going through some financial hardship, so... Eric Nelson seemed to be in quite a hurry when he sped along Friendship Street and didn't bother stopping for the red light. Now, he was in front of the judge, but not alone. He was along with his son, and he was a little guy, but he was sure a firecracker. We're gonna watch the video. The light is red, and there goes the car. <laughs> Did he go through the red light? responsibility of analyzing the video was now on the tiny shoulders of Wyatt, he just couldn't stop telling all the other secrets of his daddy. While his daddy surely regretted bringing him along, the court, however, was impressed by his sweet, giggly candor. Does he speed too? Yeah. He speeds. <laughs> Mr. Nelson, you're raising a, uh, a future, I'm not sure what, but if he's, whatever he does in life, he's going to be successful. <laughs> Thank you very much, Your Honor. He has a high morals, and he has an honest young man. I'm pretty sure Mr. Nelson didn't think, even in his wildest dreams, he was going to end up being busted by his own son. The judge left the verdict to Inspector Danny in the end, and he took the side of his co-partner on this case. We will get the ticket book right Daddy, up for that. Yeah. <laughs> you might get left here. <laughs> <laughs> we can just keep writing more tickets for him, that's all. It'll take some time. <laughs> The court's going to impose a $35 court cost on this matter. Good luck to you, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Caprio was a regular at the Twin Oaks, an eatery in Rhode Island, and Mr. Joe had been part of that place for decades. 
However, today, he was here at the court to answer for a breach in traffic regulation. All right, you're charged with going through a red light on Eddie Street and Dudley Street. Guilty with extenuating circumstances. What did you do, make a right-hand turn? Yes. January 3rd, my wife had major surgery at Women and Infants Hospital, and we had our first pro post-op conference. Uh, apparently, Mr. Joe here was not speeding just for the heck of it. He had a pretty good reason, as he was driving his wife to a doctor's appointment. On top of that, the couple did leave early for the appointment, but the extenuating circumstances got in the way. We left in plenty of time from Pawtucket. However, for some reason, the DOT decided to close two lanes. I don't know what reason. Long story short, we were going to be late. And when you check in at Women and Infants Hospital, there's a security thing. It takes quite a while before you get to the appointment. Judge Frank and Inspector Quinn got down to business. Mr. Joe was an upstanding citizen and an integral part of the fabric of Rhode Island. The inspector was already impressed by the guy, and that factor certainly helped in the verdict. Mr. Zito, at his age, is still caring for his wife and bringing her to the medical appointments and everything. And I believe that's a bigger lesson to learn than the red light. Joe, I think we can give you a break on this. I don't want you coming back next week. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Not going to happen. <laughs> Appreciate it. Good luck. Thank you. Hope to see you soon. Okay.